In addition to the flashing images, the GIF contained the message, you deserve a seizure for your posts. Upon seeing this rapidly flashing GIF, plaintiff suffered a severe seizure. Good morning, everyone. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. And we're here to talk about this week's law news with you, the lawful masses. Today we're talking about Kurt Eichenwald. Mr. Kurt Eichenwald is a author. He's a famous author, I think. Kurt Eichenwald is a New York Times best-selling author. He recently wrote 500 Days, Secrets and Lies in the Terror Wars, which was on sale September 11th, 2012. He also wrote The Informant that the movie was based off of. Okay, The Informant. Interesting. So he's not a small-time author. And so he has the resources, I guess, to pursue this kind of case. And I'm glad he did because we get to read about it. He has epilepsy. And someone sent him a tweet of a flashing GIF. And it was intended to cause an epileptic seizure. And it did. This is a, a court memorandum. So this is going to include the findings of the court, which means the courts are the courts finding these things to be true. Not these are not just allegations anymore. These are, are are now established facts in this court of law. Plaintiff Kurt Eichenwald brought this action against defendant John Ravello over a year ago. Defendant is facing criminal charges related to the same incident underlying this case and therefore this case was stayed. On March 6, 2018, the court partially lifted the stay and ordered defendant to respond to plaintiff's complaint. Defendant responded by answering counts two and three and moving to dismiss counts one and four. Plaintiff is a journalist and an author currently living in Texas. Plaintiff is well known. He writes for Newsweek and Vanity Fair. He worked for years at the New York Times. He has authored four books and has won several awards, including the George Polk Award twice. He is an active Twitter user, having posted over 50,000 tweets. Plaintiff also has epilepsy. He was diagnosed at age 18 and suffered from frequent seizures as a young adult. Medication has helped reduce the number of seizures, but he continues to experience them. Plaintiff has been public about his condition in the past and in 2016 wrote an article published in Newsweek titled, Sean Hannity Apologized to Those with Epilepsy or Burn in Hell. During the 2016 election, Plaintiff was often critical of then-candidate Donald Trump and expressed those views in his writing and on his Twitter account. Plaintiff received numerous threats and messages over the internet as a result of his public criticism and wrote about the online abuse for Newsweek in October of 2016. In that article, Plaintiff wrote about one instance of online harassment in particular. Plaintiff received a tweet from someone with the handle, Mike's Deplorable AF, in that tweet, Mike made mention of plaintiff seizures and included a small video. The video was some sort of strobe light with flashing circles and images flying towards the screen. The video was epileptogenic, meaning it triggers seizures. Plaintiff did not suffer a seizure upon opening this video, however, because he quickly dropped his device. Two months later, on December 15th, 2016, a Twitter user with the handle Jew Goldstein replied to one of Plaintiff's tweets. When Plaintiff clicked on the notification button on Twitter, the replies to his tweet immediately loaded, including the reply from Jew Goldstein. The tweet included and immediately displayed a graphic interchange format, GIF, that contained an animated strobe image flashing at rapid speed. In addition to the flashing images, the GIF contained the message, you deserve a seizure for your posts. Upon seeing this rapidly flashing GIF, plaintiff suffered a severe seizure. For reasons that will become clear, it is necessary to briefly discuss the physical reactions that led to plaintiff's seizure. Light comes in rays or waves comprised in part by photons. Those waves sometimes reflect off objects and strike a person's cornea, which focuses the light wave. The eye focuses the wave onto its retina, which through a process of visual phototransduction converts the light wave into electrical impulses. Photons hit the retina and are converted into electrical signals. These electrical signals are transmitted by the optic nerve to the visual cortex. Such electrical signals from strobing images can trigger seizures in certain individuals with epilepsy. So, defendant intentionally caused photons to hit plaintiff's retina, causing plaintiff to suffer a seizure. 
Plaintiff's wife witnessed the seizure and, after caring for plaintiff, called the police. According to information obtained as a result of the criminal investigation, defendant, who lives in Maryland, operated the Jew Goldstein account. Defendant discussed with others his intent to harm plaintiff by causing a seizure. Defendant was then arrested on March 17, 2017, and three days later a grand jury indicted him for the offense of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Plaintiff continued to suffer as a result of the December 15 seizure. He experienced another seizure in his sleep and had to take increased medication, which left him sedated and disabled during the holidays. He required assistance from his family to perform routine tasks and was embarrassed, humiliated, and deeply upset as a result of this incident. With the criminal case against defendant still pending, plaintiff filed a civil case against defendant in this court on April 24, 2017. Plaintiff brought forth four claims, battery, assault, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and purposeful infliction of bodily harm. A complaint must contain sufficient matter accepted as true to state a claim to relief that is plausible on its face. Facial plausibility exists when the plaintiff pleads facts that allow the court to draw reasonable inferences that the defendant is liable for the misconduct alleged. An inference of a mere possibility of conduct or misconduct is not sufficient to support a plausible claim. Factual allegations must be enough to raise a right of relief above the speculative level. A pleading that offers labels or conclusions or a formulaic recitation of elements does not do. Nor does a complaint suffice if it tenders naked assertions devoid of factual enhancement. Although when considering a motion to dismiss, a court must accept as true all factual allegations in the complaint, this principle does not apply to legal conclusions couched as factual allegations. So this is the brief review of the standard for a motion to dismiss. Why are we saying that the, the, the factual allegations in the complaint are accepted as true? Why don't we the accept, the, accept the defendant's allegations as true? Because a motion to dismiss is a one-way motion to dismiss the complaint or certain claims in the complaint. And so it's always a defendant's motion to dismiss a plaintiff's claims. Even in a case where a plaintiff is motioning to dismiss the defendant's counterclaims, the defendant is the counterclaim plaintiff, and the plaintiff is the counterclaim defendant. Defendant has moved to dismiss counts one and four. Under Texas law, the definition of assault is the same, whether it is civil or criminal. A person commits assault if they knowingly, intentionally, or recklessly cause bodily injury to another, or whether they should reasonably believe the other person will regard such conduct as offensive or provocative. Assault is redressed for threatened but non-consummated touching. Battery is redressed for an actual touching. Texas courts have recognized private causes of action for both assault and battery for well over a century. So the law is clear. Whatever the label given to the cause of action, under Texas law, a plaintiff can assert a cause of action for common law battery, or intentionally, knowingly, recklessly causing bodily injury, or putting a person in reasonable belief that they will be offensively contacted. The other reading is that a person cannot bring both an assault and battery claim. That's how we end up getting the fourth charge dismissed. Defendant argues that plaintiff's allegation do not amount to a battery under Texas law. The court disagrees. As an initial matter, the court notes that however one characterizes plaintiff's claim, the facts as pled constitute some form of tort. The fundamental purposes of our tort system are to deter wrongful conduct, shift losses to responsible parties, and fairly compensate deserving victims. So far as there is one central idea in tort law, it would seem that it is that liability must be based upon conduct which is socially unreasonable. The civil tort is a mechanism by which courts aid in the maintenance of a civil society, and as such, offensive contacts or those which are contrary to all good manners need not be tolerated. Plaintiff has alleged that defendant sent plaintiff an image with the intent to cause plaintiff to have a seizure. Whatever exact name a legal scholar may put to it, that is a tort. It is conduct outside the bounds of a civil society, conduct that should be punished so as to deter its repetition, and conduct that causes a compensable harm. Although the nation's leading authority on tort law contends that there may be no necessity whatever that a tort have a name, in the first three counts of his complaint, plaintiff has applied several 
to the tortious conduct he perceives here, battery, assault, intentional infliction of emotional distress. And specifically, defendant has moved to dismiss plaintiff's battery claim. Therefore, it is through the lens of an alleged battery that the court shall assess the validity of plaintiff's pleading. And then the court is going to go on here and explain that the causing of light rays to cause a seizure in someone could definitely be uh, a battery. So it says a battery requires intentional physical contact. If a person intentionally causes another to come into contact, that is also a battery. So, you know, pushing a person into a person, or in this case, causing a computer to display a, an animated GIF. Here, plaintiff generally alleges that defendant intentionally caused plaintiff to come into contact with a harmful physical element, the strobe GIF, and that is a battery under Texas law. It is alleged that the defendant knew that plaintiff would see the GIF, knew that his physical properties would cause him a seizure, and knew that his seizure would be physically harmful, or at least offensive or provocative. Not only did defendant know these things, plaintiff alleges that defendant intended the exact harmful result that occurred. Plaintiff has stated a claim for battery under Texas law. To be sure, plaintiff has not presented the court with a case in which a Texas court found a battery under the circumstances presented here, and the court found none. But the court also has not found any Texas case establishing that the use of a laser beam or sonic weapon constitutes a battery. Yet if a person used a laser to intentionally blind another, or a sonic weapon to intentionally cause permanent hearing loss, the court is confident that a Texas court would find a battery, even though the contact at issue was only a beam of light or a sound wave. That no Texas case exists where a plaintiff was harmed by an epileptogenic GIF in a tweet is neither troubling nor surprising. The broad sweep of Texas tort precedents provides firm ground on which to find that this unique fat pattern, if proven, qualifies as a battery. And that's where I'm going to stop because that's really the meat and potatoes of this part of the case. The judge has allowed this claim, including the intentional infliction of emotional distress, including the, the battery um, claim to go forward, and we're going to get to find out what that's worth, what a Twitter battery who give, that, that gives an epileptic person a seizure over the internet, what that's worth. That, that, and I, th I think it absolutely should be worth something. I think that it should be deterred. It should, it should, Mr. Eichenwald should be awarded an amount of money that deters future Mr. Ravellos from, from sending this kind of thing because this is absolutely horrific. I can't imagine surfing the internet constantly wary of, of someone sending you a, a flashing gif that could cause a seizure. On a side note, wouldn't there be like software or something that could try and limit frame rates and identify that there's a strobing something on the screen before it gets to the screen and then stop it? That would be a really cool invention for people with epilepsy. Just saying. He's suing the guy in Maryland. And so he's applying Texas law in Maryland. Yeah, we're in. This is... This is in Maryland here, so we're applying Texas law to Maryland through a federal court, which is a little weird. That's the, the federal court's not usually the traditional body to adjudicate state law. So what the court is saying is that that fourth claim is not quite established presidential law yet. We'll, we'll save that one and, and let the, the plaintiff handle that how they want to in another court. So what do we think of that? You can send somebody a animated GIF and cause a seizure and if you did that intentionally that is a battery I think that's perfectly acceptable I think that's a that's a very good outcome and we should be recognizing when people are able to use the digital technologies of our time to cause actual harm to people that should be punished and deterred through tort law through criminal law etc what do you think? Makes sense to me. There was an intention to harm, um, and harm was yeah. done, and uh, that yeah. doesn't seem right. Can we take a second to talk about Ms. Paul's graph and proximate cause? There is a line here, though. We have a concept called proximate cause, where you have to more or less be the direct cause of something. Even a third party who's hurt, let's say that 
if your Uber didn't come pick you up because somebody ran a stop sign and crashed into the Uber, you don't have a claim against the guy who ran the stop sign. Your Uber driver does, but you don't have a claim. You can go find another Uber. You can go about your life. And you, are, you have a duty to. You actually have a duty to not allow yourself to be further damaged by such a situation. For me, a defining point of the case is the the intention that it's like, okay, well, I know that he's epileptic, therefore I'm going to find, you know, a gift and send it to him. I have a little bit of a question in my head, like, what if I didn't know that someone was epileptic and I sent them a funny anime gift or something? Well, that wouldn't be knowingly, intentionally, or recklessly. Um, sure. Recklessly is a, is a should have known. I would have to say something like this guy said here, like, I, I've constructed this video to cause seizures. See if it works on you. And then if it causes a seizure, yeah, then I'm probably in trouble. If I constructed a video or GIF to cause a seizure and didn't say anything, it's harder to prove, but there's still intent there. And you, as long as you can prove the intent, then you can, you can maintain a claim. Um, intent or knowledge or recklessness. It shouldn't mean that anyone who posts flashy animated GIFs and videos on the internet has anything to worry about. No. Nor do I think that Kurt Eichenwald is regularly going to experience seizures by going on the internet and, you know, just looking at normal videos and things. I'm pretty sure this was a, a very flashy GIF that was specifically meant to cause a, a seizure. So I, I don't think anyone has anything to worry about sending flashy animated videos or GIFs to anyone. It's the intention, the manifested intention, that really makes the difference in this one. And I don't mean this in a horrible way, but it is kind of horrible. And it's probably the fact that it happened to Kurt Eichenwald and not a homeless person. Yeah. I, I Sorry, I don't mean to offend. I think this is a statement of, of reality. If a poor person called the police and said, I had a seizure because of a Twitter GIF, I think the police would treat that differently than if a New York Times best-selling author, who I'm going to guess is of great means, nothing wrong with that, but I'm saying the police respond differently to different situations like that, which is Unfortunate, horrible. yeah. Very unfortunate. And so I'm not saying anything bad about Kurt Eichenwald, but I am wondering aloud whether we only get here because he has the means to pursue it. Now, he's pursuing this in a civil court, too. So that is also of one thing. That's going to be fairly expensive to by itself. Um, but I'm talking about the criminal charges. I mean, how many how many of us, like, so I'm not a wealthy person. Um, how unwealthy do you have to be before the police don't report and follow up on your, on your Twitter seizure GIF charges? Hello, Yosa. Can Yosa come hop? Yo, go girl. Yo, go girl, yes you are. Hmm, you are. That's my go girl. Yes. That's my go girl. Thank you very much to all of our Patreon supporters. You can go to patreon.com slash ljfrench to learn how you too can become a monthly Patreon supporter. Our $500 supporter for the month of June is again Kareem Harper. Thank you very much, Kareem, for your, your support. At this point, I'm calling you our benefactor. Thank you very much to our $50 plus supporters, Jonathan Doe, DJ Gilcrease, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, Sean McNamara, Vera Montaigne, Johnny Chanderson, Michael Pierce, and William Gonzalez. Takes a whole breath to say that. And thank you very much to the 216 $5 plus supporters. I think I saw somebody switch their, uh, their, their pledge last night. Thank you very much to all of you. You're all on the uh, LED panel behind me. And when I do the VODs, I try to make graphics to scroll on the screen. I'm working on motion graphics, but uh, After Effects is hard. It takes time. And I have, I've, I've th I, we're three VODs behind right now. I have uh, three videos that need to get done. All right, so that is our show, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to let you all go, and I'll see you again in about 11 hours for the Devolver Digital reveal. 
All right, we're out in 18 seconds, everybody. Have a good one.